right, everyone. It is me, Judson Chan. Ugh, man. Well, I went to bed really early yesterday, but... Uh, I don't know. I feel like I could have used an extra 30 minutes of sleep. I mean, I'm not feeling too off, but... I don't know. Or maybe it's just, uh, it's just so early in the morning that maybe I'm still a little groggy. Alright, so we don't really have much going on right now. Uh, for some reason, there's some kind of, like, slight fear trade going on, because bond yields are down. And, like, an okay amount. Dollar index is, uh, up slightly. Um, I, and then, of course, the stock futures are slightly down as well. It's starting to come back up, so... I think what we're really seeing is just a simple pullback, alright? Because the dollar index has been crashing like crazy, sh like, for a couple days straight. All right, so it's obviously going to have to reverse a little, and it, and it looks like that's exactly what it's doing, uh, because everyone's selling off a little bit, right? Because it's a pullback, you know, they're put they're parking their money in in, in bonds for whatever reason. So the uh, and of course they're going to blame this thing. Mortgage demand is dropping to a 22 year low, right? Because of higher interest rates and inflation, etc. But I mean, it's really just you know just. I don't want to say BS, but it was already priced in. Everyone already kind of knew this was happening, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, we just need some kind of fake excuse, all right?" Because they're not because they're, they're not going to just say, "Hey, we're just going to, we're just taking profits, right?" You know, there's always got to be some kind of quote unquote scapegoat. So this fits the bill pretty well. Uh, markets are Wall Street's still pricing in like a 67 percent chance of like a 75 basis point rate hike. Uh, but you know, a 100, a 1% 1 uh, rate hike is still not out of the, not out of the cards, I guess. I guess, I could say. So you know, one third chance. So we'll see how that goes. But I mean, aside from that, I really don't have anything for you. I mean, cryptocurrencies still remain strong, right? Uh, basically, stock markets look pretty strong too. And because it's only 7:43 a.m., I don't have the daily analysis from Hustlers University. Uh, but Adam, uh, Professor Adam, who does cryptocurrency, uh, part of the university, he updated his daily analysis, and all he said was everything looks uh, very overbought on the daily chart, and like expect a pullback. So everyone's definitely expecting a pullback. But here's the problem: I don't really see that happening. All right, uh, it should happen, and I guess it would be okay if it did. I mean, I wouldn't like that because yesterday we all took losses. Because Ayush, the stock professor, he actually said, okay, we're no longer going short. Close out all your puts for whatever losses and then just go long. So now we're all along the market. And I do want to say that because Nancy Pelosi and Border Cops, what the fuck? Uh, I have to retweet this. Thank you. All right. How much water? Yeah, it's like, the reason why I'm really shitting on these cops is because, like, look at these fucking assholes, you know? I don't want to go on a rant about it, but, you know, they can kill whoever they want, nothing bad happens to them, you do the right thing, and they kill you, and then they, like, are never held fucking responsible. Just now, like, the family of Andrew Finch has finally been able to sue both the cop and the city of Kansas, right? So, it's like three years later. It's like such bullshit. Now they want to, like, patrol your fucking water. And then earlier in my tweet, Wendy Rogers, surprisingly, actually tweeted this out, right? Like, no warrant, and they're like, yo, t show us your guns, and then we'll walk away. Which is funny, because you show them a gun, they're just like, oh, drop the gun, drop the gun. It's like, it's such bullshit. No warrant, no reason for it, and it's like, yo, I just, just want to see it. It, it, it's like you have no rights uh, anywhere. It's it's such bullshit, you know. That, that's one of the reasons why I'm, uh, you know, I'm actually starting to notice that people are actually tweeting out and liking and retweeting. Before it'd be zero, or I get a lot of pushback. Now the replies are a lot less, and the likes and retweets come. So I know people are finally, because obviously I'm a right wing guy, so I see that people are finally waking up, at least on the right hand side, you know. Hey, maybe cops aren't so cool after all, especially because of the lockdowns and shit, and cops were enforcing everything. Yeah, what, what, it's like, 
so frustrated. And then I even was listening to Colbert Tate. Yeah, he says the same thing. He doesn't trust the cops at all for the exact same reasons that everyone else is saying. You know, violating rights, they enforce the lockdowns. Uh, you know, you know, you don't put on a mask, they arrest you. You know, all that shit. So yeah. So I mean, you know, things are changing uh, for the better, I guess. You know, we'll, we'll hope that keeps up. Anyway, before I go into another, because I could throw out endless, endless examples of police abuse, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so. Yeah, so I don't think there's really much going on. We'll have to see how much of a pullback this is and whether this fear trade really gets out of control, right? And then markets mark start tanking. But from, again, from what I can see, uh, not really too much going on, but there's definitely potential. And it's only 7.47 a.m., so I mean, the, technically it hasn't started. So I want to see what the professor has to say. Um, oh, the reason why we went long is because we broke out, right? He calls it a box, so we broke out of like a certain box zone or resistance, or let's call it a chop zone, I guess. I'm still learning all this, all the terminology. And on the other hand, I can't say too much because you're supposed to pay for it. So, so basically, we finally had a breakout after two months of like up and down, like a uh, consolidation swing trade. So he's like, okay, we got to go along before we miss the boat, basically. All right, so. But there's still a chance we might come back down and then it'll be range again, which means more losses. It's like, he said, like, right now is the shittiest time to do investing because normally you would just make a shit ton of money. So I'm kind of hoping that I joined this whole Hustlers University thing at the right time, right? Because I'm at the tail end of, at least I, I, I'm at the, what I hope is the tail end of this bullshit uh, bear market. And yeah, Congress wants to prop up the stock markets. The central banks are obviously propping up the markets, which is another reason why I don't think it's going to go down as much because they're not going to let it. Uh, and unfortunately, I want to – my, my thing's too far down, but basically Nancy and Paul Pelosi are buying NVIDIA. Uh, they bought a bunch of NVIDIA calls and like or NVIDIA stock, like $5 million worth of something, and then they're trying to pass that $52 billion chip deal, so Intel, NVIDIA, and – I guess AMD, you know, they can all start making chips, right? Because the problem is we're too reliant on China and Taiwan. So because of the COVID situation, you can see what happens when, you know, everything comes from China, right? Oh, well, yeah, the supply lines get all fucked up. Oh, hey, you know, we can't buy any more computers or smartphones or whatever. Basically, all our stuff now relies on, in some forms, on, on chips, right? Like stuff you want to think of, like your oven or your toaster or whatever. Right? And it's a real problem. So, so there is actually a reason to pass this thing. But, of course, you know, insider trading as a congressperson, well, you know, hey, you know what? Let's just make a lot of money. So, so what that basically means is NASDAQ's going to get a boost, which means the tech sector is going to get a boost. And if the tech sector gets a boost, they're going to bring up everything else, especially cryptocurrencies. Because remember, everything's correlated. So that's why I think this pullback really isn't going to be that much simply because there's just too much upward pressure. I mean, even Ethereum doesn't care, right? Like a honey badger, they don't care. They don't give an F. It's going straight for $1,600 per Ethereum. So there's a lot of upward pressure. And yeah, things are overbought, but I've seen many times where things are overbought and it keeps buying up anyway. Same thing with being oversold. It's oversold territory, but the price still keeps dropping like crazy. So it's like... It's not, it's not an absolute signal. And then PDBC, right? I mean, if, I mean, basically, commodity prices are not going up all that much, right? Slightly up. And crude oil is way down as well, right, after a fantastic rally. So let's see. Uh, I am looking for natural gas and gasoline. So natural gas is still kind of up there. Uh, gasoline itself, stuff we all use to drive, is down slightly. Yeah, so I mean, it does look like inflation's coming down a little bit, but they do still need to raise these interest rates. So, you know, so far it's worked. I mean, it's worked. I mean, the central banks, they played their card, the ECB, they played their card, right? And it worked so far. So, I mean, I wouldn't be uh, shorting the market, right? Unless you're doing like day trading, because that's basically what they were doing in Hustlers University. So, yeah. Uh,. Yeah, so I took a small loss after a gain, and then today I have to close out my spider puts, 
right, for a loss of some kind. But, I mean, if we get a slight pullback, then I can definitely close out for a much smaller loss. So that would be nice. But if not, I mean, the, as soon as we went long yesterday, everything took off. So it, it already all compensated for all my losses. Um, it, it just sucks because having to change directions right in the middle of, like, a complete trend reversal in the markets... I mean, there's really nothing you can do, which really sucks. Like, try, like trying to trade shit like this is, like, impossible. What you really want to be trading is this, right? Clear signal down or clear signal up. The problem is when you have this bullshit that we've had in the past month or past year, I'll close that, right? It's impossible to figure out where the hell the tops and bottoms are. But, you know, I'll actually show you. I have to zoom in. So the reason why we have a breakout is look at these double tops, and then we find, and then low. Uh, so we have uh, support, and then high, and then a uh, higher low, and then now we have a higher high. All right, we finally broke because it tried to break out twice, didn't work, so it kept getting rejected. But then it didn't go down below support down here either twice. So it tried again, and then it broke out, and that's why he went long yesterday. So, pretty cool. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to say what the targets are because that's actually supposed to be private info. Uh, so, and on top of that, we don't even know if he's right. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much all that I have. I mean, we have a fear trade going on. But I'm not really seeing it affecting prices just yet. But, I mean, we'll see what they pull off today. But there's a huge incentive right now to keep the shit going and keep the markets propped up. I mean, it's an election year, right? Every... Every two years is now a really important election. It's basically as important as a, as a presidential election now. So if the stock markets, at minimum, are not doing great, because even the economy can be shit, but everybody has their hand in the stock market in one hand or another. So they get compensated by having a higher stock market uh, going up. So as long as this shit's doing well, you know, the, the, pe the people in power, which right now are the Democrats, you know, they can keep their jobs, so to speak, quote-unquote. So... Uh, well, we'll see. And we got some crazy earnings coming in this week and next week. And like all big tech is reporting earnings on July 28th. So it, it's going to be a complete cluster F between now and next week because there's just way too many events going on. And before I end it, I want to show you this. The next GDP report update is actually on July 27th, not the 28th. So I think they're going to do back to back. But the simple fact is we got the FOMC meeting and we got this. So I think I think what's happening is they're going to feed the info on July 27th to the Federal Reserve, and then the Federal Reserve is going to make a determination. Okay, we're going to have to adjust, do our rate hike based on what this recession is telling us. So it's going to be a complete cluster F next Wednesday. Like, you know, I'm actually thinking next month, this coming next Monday, I'm going to buy both a call and a put that will expire. Like. Wednesday or Friday of that week, right? Because I don't know which way the market's going to go. But to be honest, I think I'm, I might just simply go with a call because we can already see that it, we're, our economy is in a recession, right? Wall Street's not stupid, right? They, everyone in Wall Street probably knows how to check the Atlanta Fed and go, hey, we're actually in a recession and priced everything in already. So the only thing that's not priced in is what is the you know rate hike going to be, right? And the smart money... The same people are still saying, yeah, 67% chance we get a 75 basis point, but, you know, we might get a 1%. So I think either one of these two rate hikes, right, I think Wall Street would be like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. So, but it's going to be a pretty nasty one-two punch because fake news terrorist media is saying, hey, we're not in a recession. We're not in a recession, but it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Ugh. It's like... I don't even know what you want to say about it. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like uh, we're starting to go back down a slight bit. But, I mean, we are. We should have a pullback, to be honest, because, you know, we've been going straight up for, for, like, a few trading days, like, since last Friday, I think. So, I mean, we kind of need, you know, we kind of need some, uh, let me see. Because, actually, didn't we have a down day this week? Let me see. July 15th was last Friday, so that would be around here. 
Yeah, so July 14th, then July 15th, we had an up day. All right, it's not working. Yeah, ended up really high. Then July 18th, then the 19th was yesterday. Yeah, then we had a slight pullback, and right now we're having a pullback. So we might have a pullback today, and then we might end the day positive, too. Yeah, because it's pretty obvious that the markets just really want to go up. So, um, yeah, if they pass that chip bill, that $52 billion uh, chip deal bill in Congress, um, yeah, the market's going to hyper-pump, no doubt. Because if NASDAQ is pumping, I mean, why is everything else going to go down? It's going to pull everything up with it. So, yeah. All right, so that's that. Um, all right, you can go away. Uh, okay, thumbnail. I gotta stop slouching into my chair. I always have a tendency to do that, but it's also because of my chair. I gotta turn on the AC too. So, like, subscribe, share this video around. Uh, thank you again to all the uh, old and new people watching this channel and video. Welcome, welcome, and thank you again. Uh, I'm still not covering, you know, individual crypto projects just yet. I'm thinking I want to wait till maybe 20. 25,000 is too low, maybe 30,000 Bitcoin or so, and it's a little steady at 30,000, and I'll just take a look, right, slowly reintroduce uh, all these projects, you know, because what I'm really looking for is capital flows, like as long as money continues to flow into crypto and stocks, then I know all these uh, shitty scam projects, you know, uh, will receive money, because, you know, it's like, hey, here's, it's like, just imagine if like a food bank or welfare van or whatever is giving out free food or free stuff just first come first serve i mean that's basically what it is right and look cryptocurrencies are surging right now despite the dollar going up and stock markets uh, down a little bit so i don't know man i don't really see uh, i don't really see that the pullback if there's a pullback it's not going to last too long not from based on this i mean look Ethereum's already 1601 now, but so I just finished the video now, and and like we're 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 booming, right? It's a fake boom, but the fake the boom has always been fake because it's the central banks doing all this shit, you know. Oh well. All right. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow, which is Thursday. Again, probably not much, right? I mean, this week's going to be somewhat quiet unless it's, there's earnings. But oh yeah, Netflix. Before I end this. Netflix uh, actually beat ex our earnings expectations, so their stock went right through the roof. It was pretty funny to see people at Hustlers University. Some took puts and others took uh, calls. <laughs> so whoever took the call is making bank right now. Whoever took the put is just getting uh, getting uh, ass reamed. <laughs> well, that's what happens. Uh, and the professor even said, the stock professor, he even said, yeah, we don't do earnings until after it's reported because it's like it's exactly like gambling, and we don't gamble here. All right, there's already enough risk. So I'm still gonna gamble on the GDP report though, but I'm gonna wait till uh, Monday, all right, when the when the premium is gonna be a little cheaper, because on Tuesday, forget about it, the, the implied volatility is gonna be way up, right, because it's the day before Wednesday, and then like I'm gonna pay a lot for either the call or the put, all right, so. See you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and um, well, I guess happy trading, right?